Welcome back to the Neutral Zone. Today we're going to be continuing on with our 2024 college football preview series. We take a look at the 2024 LSU Tigers. After a Heisman winning, Jaden Daniels uh, moves on to the NFL. Obviously, they're going to have some retooling and rebuilding under Brian Kelly. Um, what do you guys think is going to happen there? Um, do you guys think their program is going to kind of go to shambles? Do you think they're still going to compete for the SEC title? Let us know in the comment section below. Um, also, if you're new to the channel, please do us a favor. Subscribe, uh, like the video, hit the notification bell so you don't miss a single upload. We're going to continue to do these previews um, until the season starts in about a month and a half. We just got the college ball video game, uh, so we haven't posted in three days. We've been playing that heavy. I think like I'm crazy. 17 hours in, um, and it's <laughs> only been out for, for 25 hours. So um, I, I've been playing pretty heavy, so it's been fun. But uh, with all that being said, Dad, let's look at um, how we looked at LSU last year. Um, I thought they are going to have a really bad season. Um, I said 9-3 and three or 10-2. and two. They ended up being 9-3 nine and three nine or 10-2. 10-3 and, three, and, two. Yeah. Um, and three at the end of the year. Um, I don't remember. I know I had them losing to Florida State and Alabama. Um, I don't know what other loss I had those again, one of those previews that we did before, um, you know, doing the game by game breakdown, but you said 10 and two, we were pretty much right there. Both of us. Yeah. Um, how do you feel about their season though? No. Um, so the defense was, was, was bad, uh, but the offense was almost historic. Uh, we talk about Jane Daniels, the Heisman winner, but uh, you got to also talk about those two receivers. that got taken in the first round, Malik neighbors, Brian Thomas, they had a very good team on offense mason taylor the tight end who's returning so we'll talk about him here shortly uh jane daniels also led them in rushing that's why i said he literally had one of the historic seasons in college football history the problem was the defense the defense was not great you're talking about a defense that allowed 28 points per game over 400 yards per game this defense was very porous but there were some pieces there there were some pieces there that looked like if they get some things together, they'll be all right. Harold Perkins is probably one of the top returning linebackers this year. So there are some pieces, but that defense was was bad last year uh, for a very good offense. Uh, so uh, I think really for them, it's about how do I replace all of that talent that we lost? And then how do we fix this defense? Yeah, um, I didn't agree with Jane Daniels getting the Heisman last year. Um, I, I don't think. Yeah, Bo Nix. Um, I had Bo Nix winning it. Yeah, okay. I had Bo Nix winning the Heisman. Um, I think he put up some good numbers, but I just think in the big time games, um, those are the games that he lost. I mean, he lost to Alabama. He lost to Ole Miss and Florida State. The only other ranked win he had um, was against Mizzou by 10 points, which is a good win. Mizzou had a good year, obviously being yeah. Ohio State in the bowl game, having a top 10 type team at the end of the year. So that, that wasn't a bad win. But I think of the four games, you lose, you know, you lose three of them and um, obviously the Florida state game was a neutral side game. Um, that really set the tone for their season. Um, I think they were able to bounce back, you know, and still kind of compete for the playoffs late, but then the Alabama loss knocked them out. Um, I think Harold Perkins is what is arguably the best player in college football. In my opinion, that could be a hot take. Um, but I think he's a versatile defender. I think he can rush the passer. He can play in coverage. Um, last year he was my pick for, um, winning the defensive player of the year award. Um, I, I think he is. I'm not going to say the most NFL ready player because he he does lack a little bit of size, but I do think he's versatile. Um, and I think he can kind of carry the weight um, on the defensive side of the football. I think the LSU defense is going to be phenomenal this year. Uh, we have to see kind of what the LSU offense looks like um, as far as, you know, losing all of the production they had. Um, they lost Jaden Daniels, neighbors, Thomas. Um, they lost some yeah. offensive linemen. Um, but you bring you bring back Nussmeyer. He played a couple of times last year when Daniels was injured um, yeah. and late in games as well. Uh, Kyron Lacey comes back. Mason Taylor, like you said, comes back. Um, and they bring in two wide receivers out of Mississippi State um, and Liberty. Um, I just – I don't know offensively is my biggest concern. They had a top five recruiting class. LSU is always going to be a blue blood. They're always going to be able to compete. Um, ESPN has them at about eight and four, give or take, this year, which I think is kind of disrespectful personally. Um, and, again, I had them going nine and three, ten and two last year. So um, based on what they're losing and what they're bringing in, I would say that it's – they're losing a little bit too much for me to think that they're going to be able to contend for the SEC. Um, but I do think this team is a tough out. Death Valley is one of the you know toughest places to play in college football. So I give them a lot of credit for that. Uh, but kind of what do you, when you look at your roster, what do you kind of take of it? So it's funny. I think this year is going to be a flip of last year. I like a lot of what they're returning on defense in comparison to what they're returning on offense. So they're bringing in some transfer portal wide receivers. Uh, CJ Daniels, a very good receiver, the number one receiver out of Liberty. So might be able to fill that number one receiver spot. Uh, so they're bringing some players uh, to fill some spots. And then like you mentioned, Nesmeyer, we just haven't seen enough of. Uh, they're bringing back uh, their a, a one of their top running backs. But again, 
you're talking about a team that Jaden Daniels was the leading uh, rusher last year. So I don't know how will, well I feel about Josh Williams coming back and can he be a true bell cow. Um, so I think it really is what goes on with this defense. As you mentioned, uh, some of the best defensive players, uh, period, when you talk about Harold Perkins, uh, they got both of the Weeks brothers at linebacker, really one of the better linebacking course in college football returning and with Greg Penn in there as well. So uh, I think this team, when you talk about Zaire Brown coming over, uh, hopefully they fix that secondary. They still got J.K. Johnson. Uh, they still got Zai Alexander. Uh, so I think this team is going to rely much more on that defense being good than that offense being overpowering. That's going to be really where this season resides. Can this defense, one, be much better than they were last year? But I think they have a chance to kind of be special. Moving on, I'm going to go first here. Um so I, I think LSU is going to be a pretty good team this season. Um, now, this is this is kind of where I, I caveat that. I think this team is either going to be really good or they're going to be really bad. I don't think there's an in-between. Um, I think we're going to find out probably by week three. I think USC, a lot of people don't look at that as a tough test. I think USC is a tough test when you're looking at week one, not having any film. USC is arguably a top 10 offense. I mean, last year, obviously, having Caleb Williams, but I still think they're going to be explosive. Um, and LSU's defense, obviously, losing some pieces. Um, Kind of, kind of see how they can contain that, um, and then we could see how good this offense against, offense is against a really bad defense. So we're gonna find out immediately against USC how this team looks. Neutral site game in Vegas. Then you have to travel uh, to South Carolina. I think that team's gonna be really good this year. Um, so I think they're a sleeper team as well. So I think by week three, um, we're gonna know what kind of team this LSU team is. Um, can the offense output not match what they did last year, but at least um, don't take three steps back. Maybe only take one step back. Okay. Um, maybe the defense kind of lift themselves up a little bit. Um, I had them going 10 and two at the floor at six and six. My floor games are USC, Ole Miss, AM, Alabama, Florida, and Oklahoma. Those are my floor games. That was um, mine, mine as well. And then my ceiling, I think they can beat everybody on this on the schedule. I think Alabama has question marks. Um, I think AM, although they have the home field advantage and I'm giving that to AM, um, I still think that AM has question marks as well. Uh, first year under Mike Elko. Um, and I mean, I think both teams really have question marks coming into the season, um, but I do favor a &M with it being on the road. Kyle Field is just as ruckus and, and rowdy as Death Valley is. Um, so I have them losing back to back games, AM and Alabama, but I do have them going 10 and two. And those of you guys who have been watching the preview series, 10 and two for me does not get you into the SC title game. Um, I have two teams going 11 and one in Ole Miss and Texas. So I have those two teams going to the. the uh, what did the, you have, uh, Georgia? Um, I think I might have had them going uh, 10 and two. OK, with losses to Texas and um, Ole Miss. Um, but I, I do have Ole Miss and Texas going to the SC title game. Um, but again, I think this team could go to now when I say they can go 12 and 0, I actually mean that, um, based on what we see in the first three games, if they are, if they win by 28 points against South Carolina and USC, I'm going to feel very confident with them against anybody on the schedule. Um, especially Ole Miss at home, even though I have Ole Miss, um, even though I have them beating Ole Miss, I think Ole Miss is a top five to 10 team in the country. You obviously have them losing that game. Um, but I think the home field environment is going to play a factor for them. Um, but like I said, I have them losing back to back games. Uh, and I think 10 and two gets you in the playoffs, maybe with the, you know, 11, 12, 13 seed um, in the SEC. Yeah. Uh, since Brian Kelly has came over from Notre Dame, uh, this has been two years in a row, a double, double digit win team. Um, so while I have them nine and three, and I'm going to say the only game that I feel questionable about there was the Oklahoma game. I went back and forth. If you've seen the Oklahoma preview, same thing. I went back and forth on this game. Um, I think they'll get to 10. I think they'll play in a, in a lesser bowl. Uh, but this is all about how much they lost on offense. Uh, the, the success of this team last year was so heavily dependent on that offense being good. And while I said, I think this defense is going to be good. I don't know that they're going to be so good to replace all that they lost on offense. Uh, I have some some confidence in Brian Kelly as an offensive mind, but I'm not sure that the Jimmys and Joes, and when I say Jimmys and Joes, I mean the Malik, the Malik Neighbors, the Brian Thomases, the Jane Daniels, the Noah Kane who was there, the Logan Diggs who was there. I don't think that they've done a one-for-one -one replacement with that level of talent. So I think the the defense takes one step forward. I think the offense takes two steps back. That's why, in comparison to last year, when I had them 
when I had them nine and three, but ten and two. Com- comparison last year when I had them ten and two, I took one step back with nine and three. I don't think this is a hey, the bottom's gonna fall out. I think Brian Kelly is a very good coach. I think they have a lot of talent. Uh, but you're in the SEC, uh, which is gonna be very competitive, um, and you have some tough games. Uh, and and the fortunate part is the three games I have them losing, those games are all at home. I was just um, about to bring that up. That's very surprising that you had all three of those losing. With the but I just, I just suspect that those are better teams. Uh, so we'll see. I, I have their ceiling at eleven and one. I only would be very shocked if they beat Alabama. I think Alabama just has a little bit more talent. Not a little bit more. I think there's a, a, a nice little gap to me in talent. But every other game, I, I wouldn't be shocked at. But I also say that, as I say, uh, they have a floor of six games. Uh, So I would not be surprised if they drop a couple of games that, again, would kind of make you say, uh, that is not the LSU that we're used to. Yeah, I either think they're going to be like seven and five or ten and two. I don't I don't think they're going to we're going to in between eight and four, nine and nine and three. Um, I just I don't don't see it. I mean, like I said, unless injuries happen middle of the year or something crazy, I think we're going to know exactly what kind of team this team is um, come week three after they get those first two tough games against USC, really the two USC's like South Carolina and USC. But um, after we see those, you know, those two games, I think we'll figure out what kind of team this is, but um, LSU fans, let us know or college football fans. Let us know in the comment section, what you guys think of the Tigers. Um, Let us know also what you guys think of the new college football video game. We've been playing that heavy. Um, We're going to try to push out some sort of content on the channel eventually for it. Um, And as always, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the notification bell so you don't miss a single upload and we'll see you guys in the next preview. Peace out, everybody.